sure have a beautiful day, do we not? Of course, every day is beautiful, no matter what, as long as you're breathing. <laughs> so, today we're in for a treat again, as always. Our minister of the day is Reverend Scott Harris, and our song in here today is Reverend Jack Lehman. And that's the man that brings all the harmony to the church and to the congregation, and his Ed McCartan. So enjoy the whole day and every day after. Thank you. Jack is the leader. Thank you, Pastor Mall. Thank you, Pastor Mall. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, once again at St. John's Church of Faith. I haven't been here for a while. It's good to see all your faces again. We're going through some things, but everything is, you know, working out just fine. Our first hymn is hymn number 62, When the World is Called, called Up Yonder. <laughs> Savior, be with us here today and guide us into your teachings and blessings. We thank you for everything that you've given us, and we know that your will is the way. Please show us your will. Thank you, Father. And now the, um, our Father. or spiritual reading for today is Exodus 15, chapter, or chapter 15, verses 1 through 19. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength 
and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains are all are drowned into the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy into pieces. And the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You set forth your wrath, it consumed them like stubble. And then with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap, the death complete in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desires shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is it, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. Your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of Philista. And then the chiefs of Edom will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, will take hold of them. All the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them by your greatness of your arm. They will be as still as a stone till your people pass over. O Lord, till the people pass over, whom you have purchased, you will bring them in a plant and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horses of the Pharaoh went with the chariots and his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Amen. And that's the word of the Lord for today. And what Seth's speaking about is when uh, the Pharaoh was chasing uh, Moses and the people that he was leading, leading out of Israel um, through the sea, and when Moses parted the waters um, with the help of God, um, they walked through safely, and the Pharaoh's army was, of course, drowned in the waters. Um, that has uh, a lot to do with my sermons about. Um, my sermon for today is called, When Life Knocks You Down. And when life knocks you down, who lifts you up? That's 
right? God, Jesus. God lifts you up. God extends his hand, so be open to receive it. Reach out for it. God lifts you up. For what feelings come to mind when you feel like you're falling? Or when you're in the middle of falling? Fear, despair, you know, going down and can't stop it. Now if a child reached out a hand, how safe um, to grab you up? How safe would you feel? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, a child is small, so you probably wouldn't feel, you know, as <laughs> secure. <laughs> but now when a strong man or our father reaches his giant muscular arm down, won't you feel secure? and safe, you can say, oh, you know, this arm can definitely hold me, you know. <laughs> so a lot of those feelings will, uh, of fear and negative feelings will disappear. And when you're safe and sound, they'll be away completely. Hmm. Um, the, the, the child is like, one of your brothers or sisters in this world, the hand of man. And the other hand, the strong arm, is like God's hand. And that's why we must put our trust in who? God and God alone. <laughs> he makes all our cares go away. A child doesn't necessarily understand all the Father's wisdom. A child doesn't always have the strength to lift someone up. But God the Father, who is the King of all wisdom, who has the strength of infinity can lift you up and save you with ease. So you'll feel more secure, more safe, more reassured that the job or task will be done. any kind of situation it's like the same thing um, a couple weeks ago uh, I lost one of my favorite uncles and you know right away uh, the family was in you know despair but then God brought us all together again and united us and pulled us up and carried us through our time of need. And we made it through. And it was such a hard loss, too. We also got through with the memories that he left us with. Because he was one of those people who always made you laugh, always had a smile on his face, and just really brought you up. It made you feel good when you were around him. I mean, he, he always had a, a habit of having a toothpick in his mouth. So one of the things when we went to the viewing, you know, we kind of just looked at the body and said, you know, he looks nice. He doesn't, have, he doesn't look quite right without his toothpick in his mouth. You know, and everybody kind of burst out laughing. So I kind of lighten the mood a little. Um, when we were at the funeral, uh, many people were up there speaking about him and told some hilarious story. 